Hello and welcome everybody to another GMG review. Today we're taking a look at the Silver Bayonet, the Carpathians. Um, the first expansion for Joe McCullough's um, and Osprey Games' is Napoleonic Horror Game, um, Castle Fear. And this was sent as a complimentary review copy and is a 60 page expansion containing a cooperative slash solo uh, three mission campaign and a five mission adversarial campaign to loot Castle Fear and face its malevolent vampiric um, uh, I guess like inhabitants. Uh, as you can imagine from the Carpathians, uh, this is a vampire themed expansion, introducing some new soldier types, uh, a new uh, series of campaigns, which I don't want to super spoil because Jay and I are going to run through them probably at some point, and I'll run through the solo one myself, uh, and a bunch of new models. Now, um, the great thing in here uh, is that you do always get a list of miniatures needed, um, a interesting and uh, like very handy thing and I will spoil that part so if you are interested in running this in the future and you want to get a leg up on collecting miniatures you require a forest witch so a witch model four dark wolves a dog head so something with a dog head um, a living scarecrow so three living scarecrows two forest walkers uh, five giant bats five giant rats three bat swarms three ghouls and two vricolacus um, and let's go through and have a quick look at what those are uh, Beast Jerry, bat swarms, they are what they, they say they are. A bloodless hound. Um, however, these are fed a poisonous concoction and come back to unlife. They're basically undead hounds. A dog head, a capacan. Um, it's an ogre like creature with a canine head, so a large dog headed monster. A forest walker, um, like a fairy creature basically. Uh, they're like man sized trees, so let's get dryad. A forest witch, Mama Paduri. Um, so like a old sort of like hag basically living in the forest. A gargoyle, a giant bat, a giant rat. Those are pretty self-explanatory. Marseille Lupul, an evil vampire lord. Um, an undead werewolf, a prickoliki. Uh, Rackborn, a zombie basically from the keep. A tomb wraith, exactly what it sounds like. And then Vricolacus, a subspecies of vampire. Um, they also like, they're basically like a, a ghoulish vampire. They are... Uh, uh, you know, basically swarming and eating corpses like a sub vampire. Um, so, this book is, as I said, going to also introduce to some new soldiers uh, for you to play in your campaigns. Uh, and those soldiers are specific, of course, to vampire hunting. So, you have a coachman. Uh, it takes a hardy individual to drive a coach across Europe in this time of Napoleonic War. Not only is there a danger of military forces, roving bandits, and common highwaymen, but now there's also the strange creatures in the roads. Out of this mundane troubles uh, of bad roads, broken wheels, and bad weather, most coachmen are as tough as they come. While coachmen generally aren't f uh, found in the regular military, sometimes they get inducted straight into a specialist unit, generally after being temporarily recruited for a specific mission. So imagine your coachman could be someone who was um, drafted to transport this military unit to the Carpathians to go investigate the castle. A highwayman, it's a polite term for robbers on Europe's roads. Armed with a pair of pistols, they prey upon coaches and other travelers, relieving them of anything of value. While these outlaws have a little desire to engage in a stand-up battle, they'll fight like lions when cornered. No highwayman would willingly join the military, but occasionally when they're captured, they're given a choice between the army or being hung. In such cases, these individuals al almost always find themselves into a special scene, which is cute. And then a woodsman. I'm sorry, everyone can hire a highwayman, and everyone can hire a coachman, so that's, that's handy. Um, and then a woodsman, nationalities, Austria, France, Prussia, Russia, and Spain. While much of Europe has been cleared to support agriculture, a few great forests remain. The men who inhabit these forests are tough survivalists. Uh, while they lack any formal military training, their skills at hunting, foraging, forest craft, and orienteering can often prove useful. Uh, above all, woodsmen know how to about fire and can quickly start them when needed. So they have nimble and a new skill called fire starter. Um, how women have combat rider and two pistols. And the coachman has hard to put down, blunderbuss, shot bag, and a hand weapon. So the uh, new skills obviously are in the back here. Uh, and attributes. Uh, fire starter. This figure may uh, replace either a move or shoot action to swap one item of specialist equipment it's carrying with oil and torches. After the game, they return to normal. So basically, you can, like, on the fly make fire. That's kind of a handy ability because lots of things that need to be combated with fire are, like, um, allergic to fire and their immunities go away. So it means you can be armed as normal, but then you can change out something else that you have for torches and, and, um, and oil. Uh, yeah, so that's that's a neat new like set of um, of, uh, of characters basically to, to kind of put you in the mood. And then we have the campaigns. I'm going to go through the, uh, I guess like the, the, the setup for the campaigns. I don't want to get too far into the missions and stuff though, obviously because I don't want to spoil them. 
So the Iron Keep campaign, high amidst the rocks and trees of the Carpathian Mountains stands the ruins of Castle Fear. Better known, I hope I am saying that right. <laughs> Better known by its English name, the Iron Keep. Oh, f f like fire means iron. Uh, yeah, like Ferris. Mm, I think it's fear then, or fire. Uh, once it was home to the rapacious warlord Marseille Lupul, a man famous for hunting his enemies with a pack of enormous bloodthirsty hounds. Then on the Night of Flames, a group of crusaders attacked the castle. The sound of death and battle rang off the mountainsides and the light of fires flickered against the cliffs. Uh, cliffs sorry. None returned from the fight, but the smoking ruins could be seen for miles. Since then, people have shunned the ruins as a place cursed and haunted while the castle's spires cast an oppressive shadow over the nearby villages. Centuries later, someone has awoken uh, in the castle. Horrors have been seen moving at night, traveling towards the ruins, so like the harvestman energies are waking people up. Uh, an army gathers with the political situation in the surrounding country already on tender hooks. Such a dangerous, destabilizing force cannot be allowed. The major powers have dispatched their best agents to investigate the ruins, to eliminate any threats, and to acquire any treasures that could prove useful in the ongoing fight against the harvestmen. So the Iron Keep is five scenarios, all set in specific sites amongst the castle ruins. The scenarios are designed to be played in order, and the winner of each scenario is given a slight bonus in the next one. All the scenarios have been written for two players, but with little imagination modification, you can easily use up to three or four. Um, so yeah, so that's that's the core modification, and as I said, I don't want to spoil too much of like the details, because they'll be fun um, to play through in actual missions. And as like the card system in Silver Bandit, if you're not familiar with the game, it uses an event system of like investigating clues and then having random occurrences and events happen as well. Not reading too far ahead into the tables allows you to kind of get a surprise and enjoy the experience more. And then the Broken Watchtower is a three scenario campaign for solo or cooperative play in which the specialist unit must journey to the ruins of a freestanding watchtower that once served the Iron Keep. So it's basically like an outpost. So think of yourself as like a separate mission while the castle is being investigated. Rumor says the watchtower contained a small hidden armory where weapons of a peculiar nature were stored. However, reaching the tower involves passing through a witch haunted wood, crossing a narrow rock ledge known as the Spine, and finally facing the beasts that to live in the ruins. Wits and courage of plenty are required to uh, succeed in the campaign. While this campaign is designed to work independently from the rest of the book, narratively it works either a prologue or epilogue to the Iron Keep campaign. It would be fun to let the players run through this whole campaign first to build up a bit of experience and maybe even find a treasure before embarking on the larger competitive campaign. Alternatively, having played the Iron Keep campaign, you might want to continue the adventure yourself. So I'm really, I'd like to run this first, I think, with like a new solo warband. Um, as I think my Spanish are kind of retired from Silver Bayonet, they're pretty powerful now. Um, and it would be cool to do like a, a bunch of like maybe a cult investigator kind of style Silver Bayonet warband. Because um, you could easily do like a, a, a Van Helsing sort of like group being, being sent. So like I could do maybe Germany and it's, or Austria and it's like it's Van Helsing and his like group. Have a cowboy, you know what I mean? Go full like Bram Stoker's Dracula. Um, and of course obviously I have my, my miniature list here for playing the campaign. Oh, I think I missed the miniature list for the first one, or was it not there? No, that's just the miniature list in general for everything. Yeah, there we go. Maybe there's, I thought maybe there's a second, like a separate one. Um, and yeah, so they, you get to the watchtower at the end. And that is the book. So what I like about this so far is it's more content for the core game system. It is a series of missions and then a series of like um, experiences. Uh, it feels very much like a D&D &D module, like Joe is, because Joe's an avid role player and writer, um, it, it very much is in tune with his keep, or in, in, in tune with like his style of writing, and I like this kind of content, because it's kind of like getting another disc for your video game system, right? Um, I really like Silver Bayonet, I think the combat system is really intuitive, it goes really well just solo or, or like adversarially, um, and the setting of like semi-modern Europe, is just close enough to like our current timeline that you can have some sort of like fun empathy with like the problems of the characters and you can have a slight modern, like a slight like modern world crashing into old world feeling that I'm pretty excited for. And it's vampires, who doesn't like vampires? So I think we'll go full Bram Stoker's Dracula for this one. I will make up a new war band. Uh, I'll go through my miniature collection and see like what could be repurposed and what would be fun just to paint as like new, new sort of like um, uh, vampire hunting heroes. And we'll throw it down. We'll do the Watchtower first, and then maybe Jay uh, will also be interested in doing a new, a new group to go and hunt vampires in Castle Fear. So there it is, the Silver Bayonet Carpathians, uh, this first expansion for Silver Bayonet, uh, and I'm pretty excited about it. So thanks for watching. We'll see you for more of these in the future. It's on a mash. Up later. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games all recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already, and have a look to the dozens of playlists full of videos. 
I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Game of Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.